It was the middle of summer, and I decided to go for a late night walk to clear my head after a tough day at work. I lived in a suburban area just outside of the city, nestled in the middle of the woods. We had numerous small hiking trails in the woods between the streets and the houses, but I always steered clear of them at night for safety purposes. And that night, I was reminded why. I made my way down the street from my house, turning on to the next block, only to realize that I had brought my bad headphones. The music playing in one ear was all crackly, so I decided to turn it off and just enjoy the quiet sounds of nature around me. However, the tranquility didn't last long. My skin started to crawl when, out of nowhere, coming from the direction of the woods, I heard an indistinguishable screeching noise. It was almost like someone or something was shrieking out in pain. At first, there was only one cry, and I quickly convinced myself that it was just an animal noise, probably nothing out of the ordinary. Still, I was shaken up enough to not want to continue my walk, so I promptly turned back toward my house. After a few steps, though, I heard it again. It was like a high-pitched, guttural scream, and I couldn't help but think that someone was in trouble. I called out toward the woods to see if anyone was there and if they needed help, but I didn't get an answer. I waited for a minute, but there was only silence. I turned and started walking toward my house again, and just as I was about to leave the woods behind, I heard it again, only this time it was much closer, and it was repeating over and over. The sound pierced my ears forcing me to cover them with both of my hands as I looked around to see what was making such a terrifying noise. However, it was too dark, and I couldn't see anything, at least not at first. Just as I was about to give up looking, my eyes caught a small shimmer about ten feet up a tree. I focused my attention there, and although I couldn't tell what it was, clearly see two reflective eyes looking down at me. The screeching stopped for a second as I locked eyes with the creature, but before I could get a better look at it, I heard another scream, a different one. This time, it came from deeper in the woods. I looked away from the tree I was staring at for a second, and by the time I looked back, whatever it was had vanished. The other shrieking noise continued, and eventually, I gave up on looking for the source and decided to keep walking home. But I swear, no matter how much farther I got from that section of the woods, the screaming never got quieter. I tried to look up any possible explanations for the eerie sounds, but my search turned up nothing. It remained a mystery, haunting my late night walks and reminding me to always be cautious in those woods. When I got home, I searched for possible sources of the eerie sounds, but I couldn't find anything. The closest thing I could find online were videos of animals screeching, but those noises weren't quite the same as what I had heard. Desperate for answers, I decided to ask my neighbors if they had ever experienced that sound before. While none of them had, one neighbor shared a chilling story. Their dog had been taken by something from their backyard, and they found its collar near one of the trails in those woods a few weeks later. It was evident that whatever was out there was a predator, and I couldn't help but feel relieved that I had made it back home safely that night. I had been living in Florida for three years, this experience was the first significant one after splitting up with my high school boyfriend. Eventually, I reluctantly agreed to meet someone my friend Chelsea had been telling me about. She gave me his number, and after chatting, we seemed to hit it off. I agreed to meet him at the beach near my house for a walk and some hangout time one evening. Little did I know that it would turn into a huge 
huge mistake. It was a little past 9 p.m. when I pulled up to the beach in my Jeep. After texting Mark, the guy I was supposed to meet, I began walking toward the lifeguard tower where we had planned to meet. I was almost there when I felt my phone vibrate. It was a text from Mark saying he was coming from the other side of the beach and suggested we meet in the middle. Without thinking much, I started walking in that direction, excited to finally meet him. I replied, letting him know I was on my way. But I soon realized that my message wasn't going through. I hoped it wasn't a big deal and continued walking. I turned my head to the right to take in the view of the water and the stars above. But what caught my attention was the person walking on the beach behind me. I tried to appear nonchalant as I glanced over my shoulder, hoping to see something that would explain their presence, like a dog or some other reason for being there. Anything other than the possibility that they were following me. Unfortunately, there was nothing to suggest any other reason for their presence and it was becoming clear that I might be followed. I decided to stay calm and texted Mark to check where exactly he was because I couldn't spot him yet. I looked up from my phone and glanced back again, and the person was still there, now seemingly a bit closer than before. I picked up my pace slightly, trying not to make it obvious that I was alarmed, while still hoping create some distance between us. It could have been a mere coincidence that they were on the beach at the same time as me, but my gut told me to keep moving. The unease in my stomach grew with each step, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being pursued. My heart felt like it was about to burst out of my chest as I walked down the dark beach, the only sound being the waves crashing against the shore. It was then that I noticed someone walking in front of me, as if they were coming towards me. Was it Mark? I thought to myself, quickly checking my phone to see if I had missed a message from him. There was nothing there. By the time I looked up from my phone, I could see the person in front of me more clearly. Judging by the mask he was wearing over his face, I could tell it wasn't Mark. My heart sank as I let out a loud scream. He started running toward me, and as I turned to flee, I saw that the person who had been following me was wearing a similar mask. I knew I couldn't run in either direction, so I took off running away from the waterline and toward the street. There wasn't a parking lot in that direction, but I knew there were usually a lot of cars on that street at night, making it the safest place for me. With every few steps I took, I glanced over my shoulder and could see the two men chasing after me. Thankfully, the sand slowed them down a bit as they pursued me. I made it to the edge of the beach, climbed over the small barrier that separated it from the road, and began flagging down the nearest driver. Fortunately, they slowed down and let me get into their car. They drove me back to the parking lot where my car was parked and waited with me for the police to arrive. After giving them my statement, I called Chelsea and asked her what the hell had just happened. She told me that she had given me the wrong Mark's number. The guy I had been texting was apparently someone she had met on Tinder a while back, and she had stopped talking to him because he was getting really creepy. I didn't care how much of an accident this had been. I knew I would never go on a blind date or anything like that again. Another unsettling incident occurred when it was 11.15 at night, and I had just finished my shift at work. Since my car was in the shop, I had to walk home. It didn't seem like a big deal, as I only worked about a five-minute walk from my house and I could make it even shorter by cutting through the park behind my house. I left the store and started walking home, 
surprised at how peaceful it actually was. I made it from the store to the park near my house in no time at all. However, as I entered the park, a feeling of unease began to creep over me. I had my phone flashlight on, and there was no reason to feel freaked out. At least, not until I got into the park. As soon as I walked through the entrance and past the swing set, I noticed someone sitting on one of the benches near the park restrooms. I was already a little uneasy because it was a stranger in the middle of the night and I had to walk right by them to get to my house. My anxiety heightened when they called out to me and I couldn't help but jump a little bit. I tried to hide it, but the stranger noticed and immediately tried to reassure me. Hey, my bad, I didn't mean to scare you, man. I was just hoping you might have a cigarette, he said. I took a breath to calm myself and then answered him honestly, saying I didn't smoke and apologizing for not being able to help. I thought that was the end of it. I started walking away from the man and wished him a good night, but that's not what he had in mind. From behind me, I could hear the man scoff to himself and then he quietly muttered, the hell. I heard movement behind me, and I knew that the man wasn't sitting on the bench anymore. As much as I hoped he was walking the other way, he was unmistakably trying to follow me. He called out to me again, hey, wait up, where do you think you're going? I started walking faster, and by that point, I could see my house across the street from the other side of the park. The sound of the man walking behind me got faster, and I could tell he was catching up as he yelled once more. You've got to have something for me, kid. I couldn't contain my fear any longer, and that's when I took off running. There was a small stretch of field at the end of the park that I had to sprint through before hopping over the gated fence and crossing the street to reach my house. With each step I took, it felt like I could hear the stranger getting closer. And even though I didn't dare look behind me, I knew that if I slowed down even a little bit, he would have caught me. I made it safely into my house, slamming the door and locking it behind me. I still lived at home with my mom, but she was working late as well and hadn't gotten home yet. So I hurriedly called the police to report the disturbing encounter. I knew I was alone, so I paced back and forth in the doorway, trying to figure out what to do next. I didn't know if the man was still out there, and even if he was, I wasn't sure what I could do. After taking a moment to calm down, I decided to walk over to the window and peer through the curtains to see if the man had followed me out of the park or not. I immediately took a step back from the window when I saw that he was standing right in the middle of my driveway, facing my front door. I started trembling with fear. I eventually realized that the only thing I could do to keep myself safe was to call the police. I quickly dialed the emergency number and told them that a stranger was outside my house and had been following me. I described the situation as best as I could including his appearance and what had transpired at the park. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way and instructed me to stay inside and keep the doors locked until the officers arrived. I followed their advice, making sure every door and window was secured. The minutes felt like hours as I anxiously awaited the arrival of the police. When the police officers finally arrived, they apprehended the man outside my house. I watched from a window as they questioned him and took his statement. They assured me that he would be dealt with accordingly. I was immensely relieved when they confirmed that the stranger had been arrested for his menacing behavior. It was a terrifying experience that left me shaken. But I was grateful that I had taken the steps to ensure my safety and that the police had acted swiftly to protect me from a potential threat. 
From that day on, I was even more cautious about walking alone at night and always made sure to stay aware of my surroundings. I'm relieved to hear that the police arrived promptly when the man chased me from the park and stood right outside my house. As they approached, the man must have spotted them and he hastily made his escape, disappearing into the park. As far as I know, he wasn't apprehended by the police. My mom got home a few minutes after the police arrived and we explained what had happened. We decided to take extra precautions to enhance our safety. One of the immediate steps we took was getting new locks installed on the doors and windows to provide us with added security and peace of mind. After that frightening incident, I vowed never to walk home from work alone again. Fortunately, my car was ready for me the next day, so I could avoid any more unnerving encounters on the way home. It was a chilling experience that served as a stark reminder of the importance of staying vigilant and taking safety measures to protect oneself in potentially dangerous situations.